What's going on everybody? Now, I'm really, really excited for you all to see this video. You know, I'm always excited to share with you and, and give my thoughts on things, but this one's different. <laughs> this one is definitely different. You know, when you are talking about the best and the biggest and the most amazing dealers out there, the shortest of the short lists, there are not many names there are no names that are bigger than Ash. I keep hearing Ash this, Ash that. You should have seen what was in Ash's case. Ash has these amazing cards. Did you see what Ash just posted? Did you see that card in his case? And, and then I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Ash and just talk to him. How has he gotten where he is? What is his philosophy? What are uh, some of his recent pickups? What are some of his stories of different deals? What are his thoughts about PSA versus SGC cards versus other graded brands? Slabs versus raw. Selling at shows versus selling online. You know, everything I've heard is that he's got crazy cards. So when I say like, hey, what did you pick up uh, last weekend at the Chantilly show? And he's like, oh, you know, I, I had, <laughs> well, you'll have to hear some of the stuff that he picked up. Now, this is uh, an interview that I had set up about a week ago, and I've been thinking about it nonstop since. And after having such a fun time, in this discussion with Ash and, and hearing about, you know, his stories and, and how he has built his, uh, his dealer network, his customer network, just how he's grown his business. It is no wonder why he is who he is and why he has gotten to where he's gotten in such a short period of time. I'm really excited for you to watch this. I'm really interested to hear your feedback and I'm really excited to continue to do this. I really hope that I can continue to have Ash on to share some of his cards, see some of this amazing eye candy that he has and, and just continue to build on this initial conversation because I could have talked to him for another couple of hours. And I hope that this is the first of many because he's a great guy. Well, just watch. All right, everyone. So here we are. I'm really, really excited for this. Uh, we have some friends in common. And when you talk about vintage cards and vintage card dealers, uh, you don't really go too far in that conversation without mentioning this guy, Ash from Legacy Cards. Ash, thank you for coming on with me today. Sure. No problem, Craig. Thanks for thanks for having me. We appreciate that. So, you know, the name whenever I'm watching YouTube channels, whenever I'm talking to buddies about cards, whenever there's a big show coming up and talking about what dealers are going to be there and what kind of stuff they saw if they went to a show, they're always talking about your booth. They're always talking about your cards and all the the eye candy that you have up for sale all the time. But for those of us out there that may not know you, I was kind of curious, like, how did you get from just a guy to one of like the premier dealers in the country, really? Like, did you start as a collector and then become a dealer? And how long have you dealt? Like, where does that all, how did that all play out? So I think uh, I started probably when I was about 10 years old or so. So 10 to 10 to 18, you know, probably somewhere around 11 or 12. I used to start to set up at shows. And um, and then uh, then I stopped like many of us. Right. Um, and then I, I found the hobby again back in 2012. I was showing my son. Uh, an Eddie Murray second year card on eBay for four bucks and I bought it and uh, he didn't care. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but but for me that was the start of uh you, you know buying for the next two years of that time right i would buy and then i would sell on ebay and you know that's always a grind right to try to buy stuff and then sell it get you know send it to probstein and you know hopefully you make money and hope sometimes you do sometimes you don't and you know then i just stopped back in 2014 my stuff just sat for six years or so but i always loved the hobby and you know back during that time i just bought basketball um so i bought like 86 players i bought you know um lebron james Dwayne wade chris bosh um and then, you know, I don't know, other miscellaneous things I, I just bought. Like, I was just buying whatever. And, um, but I stopped and then we we moved. And uh, so I was like, all right, I got all this stuff that's been sitting in my garage for like, you know, I haven't touched it for like six years. And I didn't really have too much attachment to it. So I just started to to try to sell it. Initially, I put it on eBay. But then I, then I found Facebook. And... Um, started to put stuff on Facebook and, uh, and you know, you know, in that I was able to, I, I found out that, Hey, I, I can also buy on Facebook. And, uh, so I started to buy stuff, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would buy something for 500 bucks and I could sell it for six or six fifty. And I was like, all right, sure. that's, that's pretty cool. And, uh, but then I found it was a repeatable process. And so I started to buy and sell, buy and sell, um, but I was again doing more, more kind of basketball stuff. And so what? So not to interrupt, but I'm going to sure. interrupt real quick. So you said it, it sat for cut for a few years. So what year is this that this is happening? That you found Facebook and you really started going there? October of 2020. Okay. So we moved in the middle of COVID. Um, so October of 2020 um, is when I first started to to post my stuff on Facebook. Maybe it was September, September to uh, probably closer to September. Um, so September of 2020. And, um, you know, and that's when the, the hype of everything, everything was just bonkers then. So, um, so, you know, I, I was, I was doing, you know, for the most part basketball, but then I started to get into vintage, right? Mickey Mantles and, uh, you know, Willie Mays and Hank Aaron's and, and stuff and all stuff that I couldn't buy when I was a kid doing shows, sure. but now, <clears throat> now I'm able to buy. And so, so I started to do that. And, um, so as time progressed in 2021, probably, I don't know, March or so, um, I did the first, I did a Dallas card show. I went to the Dallas card show in November of 2020. And I remember how frustrating it was to not have a booth right because i couldn't look in people's boxes and i couldn't buy and yeah. um and so i was like all right well next dallas card show i'm going to set up so i set up in january of 2021 um you know we we rocked it it was really fun it did did really good i was able to buy a lot of stuff sell a lot of stuff it was it was just a phenomenal show and um and then, so I started to, you know, keep on, I started to do the Dallas show, but you, you know, in that I, I started to, to also purchase vintage cards. And, um, and so, you know, as, as March, April, May went on, I was buying more and more vintage. And then the national in 2021 came, um, I ended up setting up there and, um, you know, so as time went on, I, bought vintage more and more and more and uh, i i just i thought the vintage cards were just so cool um and uh and so i just kind of pivoted into that and uh and plus vintage is a lot safer than modern stuff and which is yeah. for me was also very uh it was just uh it made me feel good to be able to buy the vintage because i knew for the most part my my money was safe and um so yeah there, so the, I, now I'm I'm sitting here on the other end, <laughs> bursting with questions as you're asking me this because it is absolutely mind blowing. Now, if you've not uh, seen Ash at a show, if you've not seen his cases, if you've not seen his Facebook posts, if you've not been to his website, LegacyCards.net with a Z in cards, it, the amount, the volume of incredible cards is unbelievable 
And to hear you say that it was really spring of 2021 that you started getting into vintage, it literally seems unbelievable that you've gotten to where you are. I mean, literally, even if you're not in the market to buy something right now, you've got to go to legacycards.net. Again, that's cards with a Z. And just look at the stuff on there. It's unbelievable. That is mind blowing. Like your growth then has to just be unbelievable. I'm, and do you is a lot of the selling that you do? Is it more at shows or is it more Facebook? Is Facebook sort of the spot? Yeah, I would say it's more online. Um, without without Facebook, I wouldn't. I, I don't think I've. I would have gotten. You know, I would have grown the way I I grew right because. I started to travel to all of the big show. So I quit my job in 2022 and, and started to do this full time. Right. Um, but without Facebook, I wouldn't have been able to do that because I, I would travel to shows to buy stuff from the shows to sell on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, there's just so many more people that are looking for stuff on Facebook than at a card show. I mean, I mean, Facebook is, is basically an online card show every day. Mm -hmm. And um, I've met a lot, a lot of great people. I mean, look at how me and you were introduced, right? Right. And um, you, you know, so I've met a lot of great people, um, and it's just, it's just been a fantastic journey. So we've got the Strongsville show coming up. So people out there that are hearing this, and, and quite a few people will hear this. You would you say it's fair to say that for you? Uh, a Strongsville type show is at least as much for buying as it is for selling. Like if somebody's out there and they've got stuff that they're looking to sell, like you, you want them to come straight to you, right? A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. so, so for me being, you know, although it doesn't seem like I'm new, I'm pretty new. And, mm -hmm. but there's so many guys that have been doing this so much longer than me. Right. And, um, and so they, you know, you know, if you've bought from some of these guys 10, 15, 20 years ago and you continually buy from them, guess what? When you go to sell, who are you going to go to? You're going to go to the guys that you're comfortable with and that, that you trust. And um, and I, I understand that. And, you, you know, so I've uh, built a lot of relationships with with the legacy guys. And um, I, you know, I, I just I don't, I don't know. So so when I go to a show, I. You know, my goal is not to sell, but I will sell because I bring pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah. But it, you know, you know, my goal is to buy, and and so I try to buy. You know, I don't know anything that I can that is reasonably priced that is cool. Um, I'll give you an example. The last Strongsville show, there was a D three hundred four Bruner's Cop, is a SGC three point five, um, but. It, you know, it just was, pri I, I really wanted the card, <clears throat> but also I, I don't let my emotions take over. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, I didn't, I didn't buy it because it just, it didn't, it just didn't make sense for me. And so, but through the, throughout the last year, I know the guy that has the card. I see him set up at shows, et cetera, et cetera. So we finally made a deal for it mm. maybe a month ago at a show in New York and um, actually we didn't make it. We, we made a deal over the phone, but we kind of came to terms at the show in New York and I committed to it over the phone afterwards because I found a home for the card and um, it was still a little bit more than I wanted to give for it. But I mean, it, it, it all worked out. And um, so it, going to shows is great because you get to see so many, so many cards. Yeah. So now when, when you know there are certain dealers that say i'm kind of look for everything between this year and this year or my cap is this year and it, it's you know you've obviously focused mostly on vintage stuff now is, is there certain things where it's sort of like yeah you know if you've got things from these years i'm not so interested but like what are you most mostly buying i'm like a candy store man i i i, I buy I, for the most part, I buy a little bit of everything, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I buy I buy mostly everything. I don't buy shiny stuff, but I do buy shiny stuff. Like I'll buy some shiny stuff 
because I know a guy that'll take the shiny stuff right. off my hands. So if right. the deal makes sense, then I'll then I'll buy it. Right. But for the most part, I don't really I don't really buy shiny stuff. It just doesn't do it for me. But you, you know, I don't know. I'll buy Henderson rookies. I'll buy Brett rookies. I'll buy Boggs rookies. I'll buy you know Warren Spawn rookies. I'll buy doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. I'll yeah. I'll you know I'll, I'll buy the Bruners Cobb. I'll buy like it, it, again. There's not really um a filter on what i won't and what i would and won't buy um yeah. now speaking of the you know the strongsville shows coming up and for a lot of us vintage guys we look forward to that one that's kind of one that's been earmarked you you said that you started uh, at the dallas show you've obviously yep. you know not long after you did the national I know you did the one just in New York because I have a buddy that was telling me all about your Seaver and a 10 in the case. What are the shows that you look most forward to that that are the best for you? And and for the audience that listens to my channel, they're mostly vintage guys. Which ones do you would you point to if you were to I mean, the national is kind of obvious. But other than that, like which ones do you look forward to and which ones do you think are best for vintage guys? So I always come in with the mentality of you got to show up and make it happen. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of my mentality, but I'll, I'll, I, if it's a big show, I go, right. I do my best to go. Now, sometimes, you know, we've, we have the choice to go to, or not the choice, but there's two or three big shows on the same weekend, right? One in Minnesota, one in Boston, one in Ontario, Canada, and one, one somewhere else where you gotta, gotta pick where you're going to go. Right. Or just don't yeah. go. But um, but I, I, I try to go to 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 all the big shows, if if at all possible. But to, to answer that question, I mean, the Philly show is a great show. Chantilly is a great show. Um, the Burbank card show is a great show. Um, Dallas, of course, is uh, is a great show. Um, Strongsville is, is a great show. Um, so I ho hope that helps. I mean, for vintage wise. You know, Burbank and Dallas aren't the biggest vintage shows, but at the end of the day, you got seven and eight hundred tables. So, yeah. proportion th there's going to be vintage guys there. I mean, it, yeah. it, there there just is. I mean, yeah, yeah, I remember the last Burbank card show I did. I, I think last year in um, where was it? Uh, wherever it was, I, I I can't remember. But it was by Disney. It was by Disney. The Anaheim this guy, one, yeah. Yeah, this guy had like eights and nines of 53s like psa eights P so you never know what you're going to see right you got to show I'm up i'm i'm friends with that guy his name's mo yeah <laughs> he's a good guy yeah um he does he has unbelievable stuff and he's normally right. a local dealer but yeah now you you uh have a completely different perspective from most of us collectors and I'm super interested from your side of the table um, to learn from you about what trends you've seen recently. Like, are there certain players that have been kind of hot? So you were just at the Chantilly show, right? And at that show, were, were there particular players you felt like were being asked about more that are out of the normal group like i mean there's always mantle and there's always you know maze and stuff but who who seems right now like you've gotten more inquiries on i mean vintage wise i just don't think it's like that i think it's mm -hmm. like people want the people that they want right whether it's eddie matthews whether it's jackie whether it's maze aaron mantle cobb what like you never know what one specific person wants Mm -hmm. And you know that hence hence the way I have my inventory, right? Where I just try to have cool stuff at a decent price, and I try to take care of people. And mm -hmm. you know, if if somebody brings up some vintage, I try to try to make a deal for it. And because um, because I mean, there's there's just always stuff, right? There's always stuff to buy. I mean, I don't know. In looking in front of me, I'm looking at some forty eight leaf cards that. I had no business buying. Like, why did I buy these? I have no clue. Just because I thought they were cool. Like, I, yeah. honestly, like, I mean, you can't see it, right? But this card right here, it, it's just a 48 leaf Pat Siri. 
and the card is just clean man the color is nice it's centered well it's like a 20 you know it's marked at like 25 bucks and it's raw i was like man, i just couldn't help but buy this stuff and you know i to be honest with you i've had it for like a year and i haven't posted it or anything because it's just not i don't know what am i going to do with a 20 dollar card i don't know but it, it it was just really i just so i had bought other 48 leafs from the guy and so it, that were already graded. He had a mutual. He had a spawn. He had, I don't know. He had all the big guys. I don't think I got the Jackie, but um, or maybe somebody else. Did. I, I I can't remember. But he he had a lot of really nice forty eight Leafs that he picked up in the collection. And uh, I was like, man, somebody's gonna appreciate these. Like I like them, and I'm not even building the set. Right. Um, and and so I just picked them up. And isn't part of it just when you see something? that you don't see very often, like a super clean leaf card, you just got to buy it because it's there and, and you may not see one that clean again. So you just got to go for it. So correct. So this weekend, actually, that happened in Chantilly. So I don't know if you're familiar with the rodeo meat set. Not, I'm not, no. So it's just incredibly rare set, right? I have one card, a Bob Trice card. It was a local set. Um, uh, of the Kansas City Athletics, right? So the biggest cards are, that are in the set are like a, or the only Hall of Famers are Enos Slaughter and Lubadro. But a guy had the set of 47 cards in total. And there was, you know, there's variations and so forth. So it was a master set. And <clears throat> if you look, like the set just never sells. And the set was so clean. The cards were just like really really colorful and beautiful and so so i had to buy it and uh and i did and you know n now i gotta sell it but um yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah you know but 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 it's fine right like it's it's a really really cool set and and i'm i'm happy to own it and you know worst case scenario right if i don't move it at one of these at one of the shows coming up then i'll just throw it you know into one of the big auction houses and I know that there's somebody there that's going to appreciate that set because yeah. you, you can't find it. Like when we get off, if you search 55 rodeo meat set, you're not going to find one. And, yeah. uh, it's a, it's a really cool set. Oh man. And in it, at the, at the, the show in New York, the Westchester show, a guy came up with a, a an album of Venezuela cards <laughs> it had, had all the retro, almost all the retorados in there, but they're like glued in there with rubber cement uh -huh. And um, so I was able to pick that up. I mean, like, it's just the, the stuff you see at the shows is is just really cool sometimes. And um, and, you know, thankfully, you, you know, the stuff a lot of times comes to me. Yeah. Um, now, because, why do you think that is? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, I know I've, I've since I come to the shows. Right. I, I know a lot of the guys now that that sell the stuff and. Um, you know they'll they'll bring it to me and they'll show it to me and and so forth and you know sometimes we'll make a deal sometimes we won't um but it's just cool to see it's cool to see you know i mean there sometimes people will just show me their pc and they yeah. won't be selling they're, they're not selling anything but like i've, I've seen some amazing cards just kind of come by and you, you know just the most unsuspecting guys have a box and there's like half a million dollars of cards in that box like it's yeah. just nuts and um you know you say that super nonchalantly you're like you know just people kind of know me because i kind of been around but you know like you said a minute ago there are dealers that have been going to these same shows for 30 to 40 years like yeah. i think that you've built up a really good rapport with the community and i think that that's that's says a lot about you know your interactions with people i mean even the fact that we just got introduced blindly and you're coming on with me like that there's there's something more to it than just going oh you know I've been at the shows the last couple of years I I, I mean yeah. genuinely in the YouTube community and I don't know if you watch any of our other uh, this YouTube stuff but like whenever anybody's talking about a big show they're talking about your table I mean literally that you're yeah. the table that they talk about and and you're the dealer that they talk about like I had told a couple of people I'm like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna have a conversation with Ash and and put it up and they're like how did Real, oh my gosh, he's the guy. And yeah. I just think that, 
you know, I think you're being, I, I, you're being very humble in the way that you're approaching those answers, which I respect. I totally respect. It's humbling to, to be honest with you. Right. Like I have a lot of fun doing what I do. I get to do it with my kids, my, you know, and my, and my family. And, uh, you, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just a good thing. And, uh, you know, so, uh, it's become you know, a so, it's become a family business though. Yeah, well, that's um, legacy cards. The reason I named it legacy cards is ideally my son will take over when I'm done, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to build you know a legacy for my family with uh, with the sports cards. And you know, if any of you guys have uh, you know have met him, he's he's awesome. He he does really good with people and. You know he's uh, he, he's 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 good at what he does, and uh, you know so I, I bring my I've had my oldest I've had my my middle son there who's twenty, my eldest son who will be twenty eight in October, my daughter um, helped me out for for a time, and you, you know they they all do do a great job. I've had my younger I have six kids total, so I've had my younger kids out out at the Dallas show helping out, and. Um, you know, they, they learn a lot too, right? Because especially mm -hmm. my two youngest are girls. And, um, and you know, when people walk up to the table, they'll greet them. But a lot of times they'll gravitate to my sons. Yeah. Um, and they're like, dad, you know, what's going on? You know, why, why aren't people asking us to see the cards? And mm -hmm. you know, I just tell, so, so I, I, but I had, to, I found a way for them to also kind of be into it. I just said, don't worry about it. If you talk to them, then, and they buy something that I'll, I'll make sure you get a little commission. And, um, and, the, and then they started to kind of own the fact that they were the, the greeters. And, yeah. um, and, and so, but it, it, it's good, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, at the end of the day, sure, it, there's a lot of money at stake and, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, we're playing with baseball cards, right? right. Like it's, it, it's something right. that, it, you know, many of us did as kids ripping packs and, like I, I wish, I wish I could rip packs now, but like I just don't like the shiny stuff. Like I really don't. It just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. It's, it's just, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just not, not. It. I mean, I guess it would be fun, right? If you ripped a pack and you got a a big card or or whatever. But like, who the heck wants to buy a two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten thousand like a crazy box like that? No, although it would be fun to rip that box, but like. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you, you know, I, I, you know, I'd just rather not. So that's, that's one reason why we started to do the breaks that I do, right. Yeah. Where enable somebody to win a grail card. Uh, uh, you, you know, I think we've done maybe 10, 11, 12, 13, I, I don't know how many breaks we've done, but we've, you know, since September of 2023, no, 2022. Wow. Um, since September of 2022, we we've done breaks where, the chop prize has been a 52 mantle. Yeah. And so we've probably given away or, you know, people have probably won 10 to 15, 52 mantles, right. Ranging from a SGC 3.5. The first one we did was a PSA one. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, you're doing, so, you're doing a break right now, right. For a red heart mantle. Yeah. So the red heart mantle is, is the top prize. And in that break we didn't do, so we just did a 52 mantle 3.5 and we took a poll on our Facebook group and, uh, and people wanted to, to have kind of that, that big card spread around. So what we did is we, um, is we just put, put a bunch of really cool cards in there. There's a 51 mantle, 51 maze, red heart mantle, I think there's a jack like there's almost every rookie you could think of but not every rookie but there's a lot of rookies in there if, if you go to the site there's probably yeah. 160 spots left and um you know you could either buy a spot on the site um oh man which probably i, I have to update that on the site because it probably says there's like 400 spots or anyway it says um, there's three it says there's 390 i'm looking at yeah. it right now so by, by the time this video airs, it'll be fixed and it'll, it'll say a hundred and as of today, there's 160 spots left. And so just um, to run through a few, if anybody's out there interested in this break, there's a, there's a Nolan Ryan in a PSA seven, 
uh, there is a, a Ruth American, 48 American Association Ruth in a PSA 4. There's a Satchel Page. There's a 52 Mays. There's a 55 Clemente, a 54 Aaron. And, and that's just looking at like the first three pictures. So check that out at Legacy Cards, again, with a Z.net if, if you're interested in doing a big break. Um, so that's my yeah. version of ripping a pack. Yeah, no, yeah, I get it. And the other thing that's cool about that is like, you know, when I go to the slot machine and I pull the th the lever, I'm probably going to get zero. And when you open yeah. some of these boxes that these guys are paying, paying crazy money for, you usually get close to zero. But in a break like this, like you, you still have a chance of getting something pretty cool. Like, you know, there's six couple 61 mazes in there, a 69 maze, a 75 Brett. Like there's cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, we try to make it so, you, you know, you get something, something cool. Now everybody's not going to be a winner, right? Like sure. gonna, some people are going to get a $50 card, but we will take those cards back if you don't want them and uh, give you a credit and it, you know, you could do another break and, uh, or, or you could just spend the money with me on a, on a different card that I have or, or whatever. Right. We try to be, not take it too seriously. Right. Again, we're playing with baseball cards. Like and, right. and and we want people to have a good time and we want it to be enjoyable. Like the the minute that you can't enjoy what you're doing, and it, it, you know, it it just doesn't. Like I want it to be fun, right? Like I I enjoy. Like I I don't I don't want stress and you know I I would say ninety nine percent of the people that I deal with are super easy to deal with. Very relaxed and and so forth and you know you have your couple that may be a little difficult but you know i don't know we, we deal with them and yeah, it's, it's not bad and you know it's like one of those things where like you know if you're a dentist whenever anybody comes in they're not really excited to see you but yeah. what you're doing you're at the card show you've got this these amazing cards like everybody's kind of excited there it's a fun day it's like christmas morning every day you're at work which is yeah. pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, think about going to a card show when you were a kid. Yeah. Like you loved it. Oh, and I still love it. I, mean, I still, it, it, I still it, do exactly. it that way. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, you know, for me, I, I really enjoy it. And, um, it, you know, traveling can be hard sometimes and, and so forth. Um, it, you know, just being away from home and, 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 you know, my family and that kind of thing. But, um, but, you know, we, although it seems like I'm at every show, it, I'm, you know, we, we go away once or twice a month. Um, and, uh, we, we only try to do the, the larger shows. Um, now I want to circle back to something you said a couple of minutes ago, you were talking about a couple of cool buys that you made. Uh, you talked about the Venezuelan book, which again, small community, cause I'm, really good friends with a friend of person of a person who sold that to you and they were oh, positive really? about yeah they were okay. it was at the, the new york show i believe right correct and and anyway they again nothing but positive things to say about how that went and stuff yeah and then you also mentioned you know the the meat cards a second ago that were super rare is there anything what are some of the other things that you picked up this last weekend at chantilly anything like noteworthy that is worth mentioning oh, the rodeo meat uh, um, set is, is I picked that up there. Um, so something really cool that I picked up, not at Chantilly, but um, I picked up at Westchester. I picked up two BBC 1970 wax boxes. Mm. Um, that those were those were really awesome. Um, and you know, I got those as a referral from somebody. Um, and, uh, so, so that was, that was really cool. Um, but as far as Chantilly, what else did I pick up? I picked up, um, a PSA seven Aaron rookie, uh, hmm. PSA seven Kofax. Um, what else did he have? He had one more, a really nice eight. Yes. I picked up a Tom Brady Bowman refractor rookie. Um, which didn't that that's gone most of those the cards that i just mentioned sold really fast um at the show they sold oh uh, let's see most of them sold online um no. 
most most of them sold online. So I'll, I'll post my pickups on Facebook, and then uh, and then you know organically stuff happens. And uh, so I picked up a CSG Jackie fifty two Jackie six point five. I mean the card was a rock star, really really nice, just a really nice card. And uh, again that that sold as well. Um, so the, that. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So you pick up a CSG uh, slab. D what is your what is your take on the different companies? I mean, I know you've said a few times, you know, if the numbers make sense, if the price is right, I'll do it. Do you do you feel like from your side of the table, you know, um, that the demand is clearly stronger for a PSA versus an SGC with the vintage or is it? equalized has it gotten closer is it clearly still psa now also keeping in mind i realize you deal with a lot of really high-end stuff which might affect it some but what has been your experience with those like when a card walks up do you get more excited a lot more excited if it's a psa than an sgc like what's kind of your thought process when you see that i look at the card honestly so the bruner's cob i just mentioned in an sgc holder um, you see the Seaver that I got, the 10 SGC. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm afraid of PSA. Um, I'll buy PSA all day. It do doesn't matter. Um, so I buy the card, though. So it's, yeah. It doesn't. So even the CSG Jackie. Now, the CSG Jackie, um, the only way I, I would have gotten into that is if I got it at a good price, right? Because it's a, it, it, although it was a really pretty card, it just was a, yeah, you know it's uh, it it's in a CSG holder, and there's there's just risk there, and um, and so uh, so yeah. But you think to answer just your question, a, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, to answer your question, I I buy the 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 card, not the holder. And when you're comping it for figuring out price wise, you're just comping it against similar looking holdered cards, like similar centering similar uh, coloring stuff like that i mean because when you start talking about these super rare cards it becomes very difficult to comp them sure. you know like what is what is kind of your thought process on on comping a card that's kind of rare like that i feel is really important and um and and so you, you know you just want to look at comps and and you sometimes you have to guesstimate and mm -hmm. uh, you, you know and uh, honestly that's where having community helps out because there's a couple people that I would go to that you, you know I I don't always make decisions by myself I have a couple people that I trust that I'm like hey what do you think and we'll we'll talk about the card for a couple minutes and yeah. um and and you know just make sure we're on the same page. And that kind of helps me in moving forward. Because, I mean, it, it's hard, right? Um, when you're looking at a card that's, let, let's just call it 50 grand. Um, but, you, you know, there's other cards in that same grade that do 40 and 45. But then other cards that have done 55 and 60. So, like, how do you find that balance on what to pay? And, you, you know, you never want to overpay, you, you know, because you, you just never know who's, behind the behind the computer clicking the buttons right and right. two you, you know and so two people can get emotionally vested into a card and take uh take a card that's 20 grand and make it 30 grand but you know they overpaid for the card but guess what one of them won and one of them wanted it more than the other but you know you got to be careful to not comp the next card at 30 grand because of an anomaly yeah. And um, it just uh, – it, it can be tricky at times, right? Sure, like, sure. You know, there's just got to be – there's just got to be balance there on what you give for a specific card. But also if something's got amazing eye appeal, then it deserves a premium. And it's hard to sell that kind of stuff at shows. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't always sell at shows, but that's why we have our Robert Edwards auctions, our Heritage auctions where – you, you know, and all the other great auction houses, um, you, you know, where, you, you know, you'll see a card with amazing eye appeal do 
money that's like, oh, that's probably not real. Well, probably is. It's just, you know, <laughs> you, you know, two people valued the card more than what quote unquote comps say. Comps, right. comps are just a, a guideline. Um, if you look on VCP, there was a PSA 3.5. Jackie Robinson, 48 Leaf that just sold at REA. That was my card. And it did, I think, 24,000, 24,3. <clears throat> well, I had it on my table for 21,000. And I would have take, taken a little bit less than 21,000 for it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I knew that when, like, I tried it for a few months, didn't sell. Well, you know, I don't want to be a museum. Um, yeah. Although I have cool stuff, you know, sometimes it's time for stuff to go. And so I, you know, I, I let Robert Edwards, uh, um, you know, put it in their auction and it did exactly what I thought it would do. I thought it might have even done a little bit more, but, you know, it, it did strong money and I was happy with it. And, yeah, you know, sometimes just cards do shots and, you, you know, you can't tell if a card's going to do a shot or not. You, you know, you just got to, you just got to, you know, it's sometimes stuff balances out. Sometimes stuff does less money than you thought it would do. Yeah. And, uh, now, why Robert Edwards? So, so Ash, who has these crazy cards, awesome cards, time to move a card, sat a little bit, just isn't in front of the right eyes. It's not that it's not worth it. It's just not the right eyes. And you go Robert Edwards or Heritage. Why those auction houses? Um, I, I just, I'm a relationship kind of person, mm -hmm. right? And and so. I, I just have a good relationship with, with those folks. I mean, I've, I've been using REA pretty exclusive for the last probably two couple years. I don't even know how long it's been. Right. Um, and I haven't really used any other auction house, but, um, but, you know, I've, I've, uh, you know, also come to learn that, you know, trying others is not the worst thing either. Um, and so, so yeah, you know, I again, I'm a relationship kind of person. Sure. And, no, uh, and that seems very clear to me. And I, I'm really getting the feeling that that's a big piece of your success is that you are building strong relationships, and the people that are selling to you and the people that are buying from you. It seems like everyone I talk to and every story I hear, everybody's always leaving happy, which yeah. is is not always uh, easy to do. I want to I want to circle back to one thing you said a second ago about I appeal and the premium of I appeal. Now, obviously, every situation is different, right? You know, sometimes a card is just stunning color, stunning centering, but you know, technically, it gets a lower grade because of a little surface wrinkle on the back or something. Like when you're when you're trying to find the right price or value of a card, what do you feel like? is a, a realistic premium range. Could the premium for a, a good eye appeal card be 10%? Could it be up to 30%? Like where, where is sort of the ceiling or the range? Because, you know, even when I look my house up for sale, it's kind of a range of what it's worth. It's not one number. How, how, how wide is that range for eye appeal cards? I think it just depends on the card, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. if you, if you get, let's say a 52 Jackie or a 52 maze or a 52 mantle or a, any card that's notoriously off centered. Look at the Clemente, right? I just mm -hmm. bought a sweet Clemente SGC seven. Um, and it's incredible. Like the centering on it is just amazing. The color is just, it's just a great, great card. And, um, you know, I, I basically paid retail for the card, but mm -hmm. like, it's an exceptional example. Um, and so to say what the range is, I can't really tell you what the range is. Yeah. Like it, 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 it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's more so what, what you feel as the collector, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's worth and, no, you, yeah. you know, but, but I try to find like when, when, when doing that, I'll try to find examples that have, that are similar. Right. And you, you know, that's if you do that then that's a good barometer right so if you you know it's look at the 52 mantle card and go find one that's centered 50 50 left to right and top to bottom and has good color and doesn't have any snow 
and you know you're gonna see all of those cards do moonshots yeah um and what are you gonna do i mean it's it, if you want that card with that kind of centering and that kind of eye appeal you gotta pay same thing yeah. with the maze card same thing with the matthews card like the matthews card is probably and look there's some 52 tops experts where i'd probably be wrong right because they built built that built the set and built the high number set and so forth right. but the matthews card is probably you know one of the toughest cards in that set to find centered and you know with just a good strong example it's tough yeah. and uh so i mean last card in the set rookie card high numbers 52 tops it mm -hmm. is like all the check marks for difficult um now you know just a couple more questions and i appreciate your time we've been going for almost 45 minutes at this point and i'm having a blast talking to you um you know if somebody were to have a collection or have a a card that um they are looking to move um do you hope that that card you probably hope that they just contact you directly and that you're not hoping that they're going to walk it up at a show like what's the what's the best route for somebody who's got stuff that they're looking to move to approach somebody like yourself um i mean i'm i'm not really the hardest guy to find right i mean i'm i'm all, i'm all over facebook Right. Um, you know, you guys have my website and those emails come directly to me. Um, and, uh, you, you know, I got a very small core group of folks that, that help me out. So in case I miss an email, they'll say, Hey man, you missed an email or whatever. Look at the email that came in. So, I mean, we're really easy to get in touch with and really easy to find. And, you, you know, for me, I'm not a huge email guy. I, I'd more, more rather get on the phone and talk talk about it and just yeah. uh you know it's just much easier to cultivate a relationship that way than to email back and forth and like okay twitter your thumbs up. is he going to email me back is he going to do it? like it, it's just that can be it can be frustrating and yeah um, it, you know i i'd rather just cut to the chase and let you know where i'm at and find out where you're at and see if we can work together if we could work yeah. together awesome if we can't then life goes on right like it's yeah. again we're playing with baseball cards. And if you want to sell your baseball cards, I'd love to buy them. If you don't, then no problem. Enjoy them. Or, yeah. you, you know, and, you know, and, or if we can't come to an agreement on the price, then I'll give you my offer. And like, I don't give an offer and say, okay, it's good for 24 hours. Like I'll give you my offer and my offer is my offer and it's good. Go shop it around. And if you find somebody that's going to give you more then good, good for you. Right. That's, you know, you put in the work and you found somebody that's going to give you more, but, um, you know, I try to do things clean and easy. And if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. If I say I'm going to wire you X, I wire you X. If I say I'm going to send you a FedEx label, then I do it. And um, I, yeah, I'm all about clean and easy. I want stuff yeah. to be clean, clean, yeah. easy, enjoyable, not frustrating. Because um, when it when it gets to be frustrating, then it's no fun. And yeah. again, we're playing with baseball cards. You know, it's it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 baseball cards so right. you, you know they're they're meant to be enjoyed sure there's some are worth more than others and you, you know all that kind of good stuff but like at the end of the day they're they're baseball cards all right my last my last question and then i want to uh just have you share some information on on the best on ways for people to contact you like your facebook handle and that kind of stuff but the strongsville show coming up it's gonna it's a week away and mm -hmm. it's a big show for a lot of the people in the vintage community. Um, what are what are some of what what are some of the things that you're planning on on having at that show that aren't things that people see very often? What 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 are mm -hmm. uh, maybe a handful of, sh of cards that will be in your case and people will go, "Whoa, that's pretty special." Well. So I have a 54 Stallmeyer maze in a nine. Um, that That's like, it's pop one coolest card. But, um, and that is something you could have seen, but actually we just sold it today. Oh, um, wow. Congratulations. That, that, thanks. That, that, that is probably, 
the I don't buy much off of emotion, right? But yeah. when I saw that up for auction um, a couple of months ago, I said, "Man, I got to get that card." And um, fortunately, you know, I was able to purchase it. And um, and then another another dealer um, had a customer that uh, that was interested in the card, and uh, you know, we ended up making a deal for it. And there you go. Um, but I got to own that card for a little bit, which is yeah. phenomenal. It, yeah. It's phenomenal. Um, other cool cards that we have. Um, so, um, I mean, man, there's, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, there's a couple 52 mazes. There's a seven SGC, um, a PSA seven. I actually like the SGC seven better than the PSA seven. Mm. I got a 51 Bowman maze seven. Um, and as you know, we have a couple 52 mantles. Um, the Seaver 10 is a beautiful card. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and it's, it. it's pop one, right? There's only one STC and only three PSA. Um, so really that, that's a, a really amazing and iconic card. Um, I got, I got some, some nice Wagner cards. Um, I bought a collection, um, of Cobbs and Wagners from a guy who, um, initially he wanted me to, to help him consign them with uh, one of the auction houses. But, um, but then I was able to make a deal with him on those cards. And I just, it, you know, I, I, uh, I bought those cards from him. Um, oh, you know, I have the, the 1869 Cincinnati red legs card. Oh, um, wow. I, I have one of those and I, I, you know, that's one of the first, first baseball cards ever made. Um, you should be able to see a picture of that on the site. Um, we're working on getting all the pictures on the site guys. So sorry, it doesn't have all the pictures and, and, and so forth, but uh, it's a, it's a work in progress and, and we're working on it. I can't even imagine the amount of stress and work whenever you're going to a show and what the transport of all of that would look like. That's gotta be, that's gotta be a, a tough, that's gotta be a tough di- gig to do. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of responsibility, right? It it is, and uh, but you know we've been doing it now for a couple of years, and uh, you know it's just just kind of what we do, and yeah. um, and you know you just don't do irresponsible and stupid <laughs> things, right? Like that's right. that's it, and uh, you know so uh, so yeah, awesome. So uh, Facebook. Now again, the the website is Legacy Cards with a Z uh, yep. dot net. Uh, Facebook. If somebody were looking for you on Facebook, um, how would they do that? Um, so you, my name is on the screen right there, mm-hmm. um, and so you just type that in, and then J A I, and then my name should pop right up. Okay. Um, and but yeah, ha- so it's not that I sell directly on Facebook. You have to be a part of the vintage, the card groups that are there. Okay. Um, and so I'm in most, most of the larger vintage card groups I'm in. And, um, there's only, I don't know, a handful of them, right? Maybe six or seven or, or so vintage card groups that are, that have, you know, seven to 7,000 people and up or whatever, but I'm in most of the large ones. I think I'm in all the large ones except for, <laughs> except for one. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that's a whole different story that I want sure. to share, but, sure. um, but um, but yeah, I mean, d- d- you know, again, I'm not, I'm not hard to find. So whether yeah. it's Facebook or um, Instagram is Day Sport Singular Sport Cards. So Day Sport Cards. That's my son's uh, son's. My son kind of manages that, and mm-hmm. um, and then we do Twitter a little bit. Um, it's uh, Cards. So C A R D. I believe it's five Z's and then the number four and then you cards for you and, uh, and, and the website, but the website's the, the easiest and most direct way sure. to, to contact me. If you don't already have my contact info and, and, uh, and on the website, there's a link to uh, you on Facebook at the very bottom. There's a Instagram link and there's a Facebook link for anybody out there who's who's uh, looking for that. And I would really encourage you. If, 
I haven't had Facebook in a few years. And then I was, somebody had sent me a link to some of your stuff on Facebook and I'm like, all right, I got to dust off my Facebook account and I got to get in some of these groups because like you just said, you know, as soon as you're buying stuff, you're putting it on your Facebook and some of it sells quick. Mm -hmm. And I also saw right before the Chantilly show, you snap some pictures of, Hey, I've got, these are some of the things I'll have at the Chantilly show. So yeah. that was sort of a cool preview uh, to see, you know, as to kind of get the juices flowing and stuff. So I highly recommend uh, joining some of those groups and, and following Ash on those. I genuinely could not thank you enough. I had an absolute blast over the last almost hour talking to you, getting to know you, hearing your story. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are looking forward to meeting you if they haven't yet or seen you again at Strongsville. Um, and again, highly recommend it. I've never heard, I've literally never heard a bad experience with this guy. So highly recommend that you trust him and uh, give him some of your business either online or at some of the upcoming shows. I really appreciate uh, you coming on with me. All right, Greg. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs> I told you, I told you this would not disappoint. I mean, to think that this guy went from middle to late 2020, started getting into vintage cards in 2021, and already has some of the cards that he has. Now, look on the screen right now. And just this is just some of his inventory from his website. <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. And you know, when you're trustworthy, when you are fair with people, both buyers and sellers, it, it it's not surprising that somebody could grow and somebody can develop the reputation like he's already developed. I look forward to more visits with Ash and his team. I look forward to sharing more of his recent pickups. I look forward to I look forward to meeting him in person at Strongsville in just a week. Unbelievable. I had a great time. I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments below. Should this become a regular thing? Should we start should we start talking more? Because I really think there's a lot that we can learn when we look at the other side of the table and we hear from the other side of the table because that was a blast. <laughs>